uh, has got first place at virtually every live event that he attended uh, before that, uh, that little run. So he was first place at King's Cup 2. He was first place at Gamer G uh, ESWC many times. Let's see how he performs against Tintu, both playing Tombstone in their deck now. Yeah, interesting. And here comes a Lava Hound from Surgical Goblin. Are we going to see a Lava Hound from Tintu? Mega Minion is his choice to counter in the back. Let's see if Surgical Goblin can get an early strike with this Lava Hound, but it looks like a Mirror Deck is going to be played here for both players. Now this is the final 15th player that we're going to get to see here today. Each team uh, has uh, three representatives. There might be a few subs uh, still to look forward to, but this is the last rostered player from Team Liquid that we're seeing now. Big hit out that left lane early on from both players, but Surgical Goblin taking the lead with the 1-0 stomp of that tower. 10-2 in a very bad spot in the first minute of this game. Yeah, in the first minute of that game, and I think that goes to the cycle of Surgical Goblin. Tin 2 would much rather have thrown his Lava Hound in the back to counter the Lava Hound that Surgical Goblin threw in there, but unfortunately he did not have that to play, so he had to drop a Mega Minion and then a Lava Hound a little bit closer. You never want to throw a Lava Hound pretty much anywhere that's not the back tile of, of the arena. Uh, but sometimes you are forced to. Another Lava Hound coming out from Surgical Goblin. He is going to continue his Lava Hound Assault. Here Lava Loon down the right Lava side. Loon. Tin is not going to get a chance to recoup from that last hit. He ins instead on defense can't manage to get this balloon off the tower, and that's going to be another big strike for Surgical Goblin. Second drop goes down, and that tower is just about finished off. Lava Pups will get the final blow as the bomb explodes. Surgical Goblin with the 2-0 dominance against Tin 2 right now. Yeah, he throws out the guards to pull the Mega Minion all the way away from his Mega Minion. Now he's going to throw out the minions. This is going to be no damage on the right-hand side. A Tombstone's coming down to block the balloon. The balloon is not really going to do much here. He's got to take down two towers. 40 seconds left. Surgical Goblin just needs to hang on at this point. That's a defensive Lava Hound in the back. Yeah, won't, <laughs> won't be uh, much to have to defend here. Uh, he, he could play either lane and be fine. He could still be knocked down uh, on either tower and have the lead with 27 seconds left. Tin 2 has got to go for the three crown uh, or go down. Looks like he's moving in the left lane, but with too little too late, the Lava Hound out front blocking the left lane, not the right side. Uh, Balloon is going to move in here, but zapped. Uh, and swatted down by the Mega Minion, not going to be able to finish it off. Meanwhile, up top, Surgical Goblin with two balloons. And Chad, what am I looking at? Uh, Surgical Goblin's name needs to be two, because he's about to take down that tower with double balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and, and into battle, Oxalate and Surgical dominating in the spring season. Both of them, though, failed to make world finals, but that, but the they still have been winning tournaments on and off. So it's interesting that people wanted to see this match at world finals, but we didn't get the opportunity to do so. So we're going to see right now whether it's the EU champion or the NA spring champion that's going to take away this match. And if Surgical loses, Team Liquid's going to have to vacate the stage. Yes, vacate the stage, and Tribe will be getting their first point. If they win, they'll be taking their first point of the match because they did lose to Nova. Nova, who's currently in the lead, waiting in the wings. If Team Liquid can take down Tribe Gaming, they will be tied with Nova 2-2 two to two in the score total. If Tribe Gaming wins, they're going to have a point and then have a chance to match Nova in the next match. Do not adjust your television sets. You are right that nobody had played any cards for the first 45 seconds. In this case, it's normally because both players have very expensive opening hands. They don't want to overcommit, putting something on the board, then get punished. When Oxalate dropped that Royal Ghost in the back, that set up Surgical Goblin to go ahead and play as Lava Hound, and we are off to the races. Yeah, Lava Hound on the left-hand side. This Royal Ghost isn't really going to do anything because that's three Elixir on the field that's kind of wasted as Surgical Goblin took it down with a Mega Minion. Here comes a Balloon. Lava Hound and Mega Minion push on the left-hand side. The Fireball is going to come out. Electrons, where are they? They get cleared from a Fireball. And Oxalate's going to eat one drop. And now the towers are looking pretty close. 780 on the left, 1319 on the right. Both towers have taken a significant black eye. We might even be seeing a 2-1 game here if both left side towers go down. Yeah, and... Emote slinging. Ooh, the emote slinging here. Let's see if we can get a... Uh 
you know, ooh, a little oh! Fail. oh! Surgical Goblin <laughs> drops the Bomb Tower! He wants that $100 bounty! Bomb Tower has made his appearance, and that means that if Surge can win this game, he's gonna walk away with 100 bucks and keeping Liquid on stage for a chance at that $1,200 grand prize. And not only that, if he wins this game, he can then be in prime position to take down uh, Geo and get another $100 for your bounty as well. That's right, we're gonna have up to six bounties today and two are active. If you are the last member of a team and you can full 3-0 an opposing team, you're gonna get a bounty. If you can win a game with Bomb Tower, that's a $100 bounty. So we will see how these players do. Oxalate taking advantage of the Bomb Towers though and pushing on that right side tower. Yeah, so much damage coming in on the right hand side. The Bomb Towers just didn't do that much. But look at this push on the left. Balloon and Lava Hound looking pretty healthy from him as we have a one-to-one -one draw. The start out and a Lava Hound in the corner pocket, but a Pekka Royal goes coming down on the left-hand side. Surge is going for the three crown base race here. He's ignoring the Pekka and Royal goes, letting the second tower go down. Only eight seconds left in the game. He's got to take this King Tower or it's over. Maybe he can get the Balloon there in the middle, three seconds away from getting there. The Electro Wizard stunning it and Surgical doesn't get the tower in time. Ox for tonight, they got a big day tomorrow, that $20,000 prize pool uh, on the line. Absolutely, but then guess what tomorrow is, though? What's tomorrow? St. Patrick's Day. Ah. Hey, that's when you go hard after you win. Get ready. Uh, Ice Spirit is going to be starting off the game for PSG. Here comes A. Ooh, a Miner getting a little bit of chip damage off when the guards do not connect on the Miner. You know, it's a little bit of damage there, and now the guards kind of just walk slowly to their death. Log takes care of it. Surgical Goblin pumping up at 6 Elixir, a very confident move here. Left him uh, vulnerable, but it turns out Adrian Page will just poison down on the right side. Adrian, uh, with a little bit less Elixir than Surge, he pumps up one more time at the back and will reach 10 first with four three Musketeers. All right, a three Musketeer deck. What does Piedra have that is going to finish out his deck? There's a Bandit coming out as well for Piedra. And Dark Prince, this is the huge push. The Dark Prince and two Musketeers in the right-hand oh. lane. Is the Dark Prince going to connect? Yes, so much damage comes off just from one Dark Prince. Muskie's still up, though. She finds herself on Ice Golem to take a few pop shots off that. Surgical Goblin finds a little bit of a connection out the right lane, but Adrian Piedra has managed to hit both towers and uh, will be counterattacking at the right side now. Bandit moving on in, but caught by guards in the center of the arena. Surgical Goblin with a good answer to that. Yeah, these guards will fall to the tower. I believe they might actually get one stab from the last guard here. I'm gone! A second stab, in fact. Ice Spear down the right lane is going to try to support some bats. We'll see if a zap goes off. It does indeed, but a miner straight to the Elixir Collector and nothing to catch it. Fantastic play by Adrian Piedra, denying the Elixir advantage to Surgical Goblin there. They'll be just about even on Juice overall. Surge ahead, uh, maybe about one and a half or two drops. Yeah, and Surge is really happy with this going into double elixir time with his three musketeer deck. Once double elixir time comes in, once the extra elixir starts pumping out, triple musketeers are a nuisance. You can quickly cycle back to them, you can uh -oh. keep them on the arena, and they definitely are a force to be reckoned. Aggressive play out the right side. We got a minion horde floating on through. He knew that there was no poison left in his opponent's hand. Sent in the minion horde, but couldn't quite get the value he was looking out for uh, from them there. Hunter on defense will be able to pop those flying troops down, and it's not a whole lot left at the right side now. Ice Golem catches uh, the brunt of that blow. Unfortunately for Surge, though, loses the shield on that. Dark Prince at the right side might not get a chance to hit Tower, especially if, yeah, if it gets locked down. Yeah, and Surge realizes that he's ahead in Elixir because of the Hunter being played and wisely Ooh. tries to pump up. But once again, the Miner doesn't get predicted. And Surgical Goblin, if he predicted that Miner, he would have been in prime position. But Beautifully played by Adrian Piedra with the Miner. And he's played, to be quite honest. Yes. Sending the Miner in the back yeah. corner like that is a really risky move. Your opponent, if they ignore the Miner, would just get their King Tower activated. But Adrian Piedra knew that there was going to be something to try to block on the back end. Sent in the uh, Miner in the reverse and uh, got caught by guards eventually. Yeah, and a huge push, but this time the guards are going to eat up this Miner on the right-hand side. The Hunter's coming out, but here's the thing about a Hunter. It really doesn't do too much damage to a tower because of its long range and the splash of it, you know, how it how it actually activates his bullets, you know? You have uh, what is it, eight bullets that come out, and each one, you know, does a little bit of damage. It's not like it's, you know, a force. And when it's arranged from the tower, only two or three bullets hit. 
very dangerous position here for Adrian Piedra facing down Musketeers, marching down the left lane, and Ice Skull and Musketeer over the right side gets a Dark Prince to get a little bit of help while on top of that. Bandit Dash is on in, but she's going to take a little damage from the Dark Prince and the Musketeer popping him down. Left side's the major push though, and Ice Spirit catches all six of the minions, or maybe at least five of them. Hunter right behind that gets the finishing blow, and that's not too much more damage on Adrian Piedra's left side tower. Hunter looking for a shot on the tower, but can't quite find it. Finishes off the guards, and that's once again a drawn setup here. Adrian Pager moving it over to the right side with a nice golem to block for the bats. Get zapped down. Yeah, and ooh, Dark Prince does not connect here. But here comes the Ice Golem, and the Ice Spirit gets onto the tower. Ice Golem smacks the tower and blows up. That's 140 damage. Every little bit matters. Hunter once again being cycled here. Uh -oh. But here comes the Minor Minion uh -oh. on the right-hand side. Oh, just gets down the Ice Golem, and the Hunter is going to clean up the rest. Dangerous spot there for Agent Piedra, but he did what he needed to to keep the tower up. Another dangerous push. Right side is going to be a bandit. Hunter and Miner trying to chip in over on that right side tower. Clips it, and the Miner will get a little bit of chip sh uh, damage off there as well. Look out on the left, though. It's a huge this might push be it, Circle Woody. Goblin. Ooh, Dark Prince guards coming out. There's Musketeers. There's going to be a Miner that's going to come in the back, and it's going to continue to smack down this tower. Musketeers are going for the finish. Are they going to be able to do it? They are! Surgical Goblin is going to be our first Razor show match vic ESWC spring finals uh, for EU season and more. I mean, he just could not stop for about a year straight. This is definitely going to be a monster match. Surgical Goblin and CMQ have known each other for a very long time. They've been, uh, you know, doing a little bit of trash talking, ribbing each other in the past. We'll finally get a chance to see here now who's going to edge out ahead. You know, would be nice to see a big, big long show match with these guys later, but uh, we're going to get an excellent preview. Uh, of their competitive performance here, representing Team Liquid and uh, Immortals, respectively. McHugh playing the very cheap uh, Expo deck that we, I think it's Expo at least, earlier in chat and told me that you would either pick Skeletons or Mega Minion, but usually not both. Looks right. like to me this looks like an Expo deck, but I could be wrong. Hunter comes down, the, one of the newest cards added to the game, a shotgun style character. He's got the little uh, David Crockett hat coming out the back there. He's gonna start shooting a ton of damage up close. A little bit of damage at range, but a good wide spread for taking out things like Minion Horde. Very well played. I'll agree with you. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, CMQ is probably playing an Expo deck here. Yep, there it is. I called it. I don't know if there's any delay on broadcast. Oh. I so called that. But oh my god, a Pekka out the left lane. Definitely going to oh. put a big old hole in that uh, Expo. Gets the lock, and with two chops, that thing is down. I Heavy hitters coming in from Surgical Goblin. A small but important detail there. McHugh put his Ice Spirit one tile too close, and it got chopped by the P.E.K.K.A. instead of jumping and freezing. And while that's only a second and a half and about 100 damage, yeah. that can really make a lot of difference against something like P.E.K.K.A. that is very slow to swing. Right. You, can, you have the Expo and the Mega Minion just working it over for an extra second and a half. Oh, here comes the Hunter. Boom! Oh. One shot's on Electro Wizard, and that's why he sees play. He's a ranged attacker that's great at killing other ranged attackers. When your Musketeer's trying to shoot you at max range, drop the Hunter right up front, and it will just blast the Musketeer away. Goodness gracious. That's a beautiful lock out the right lane. That Expo chipping away at the tower. It's going to put C. McHugh in a slight lead here. You see 1395 on his right side tower relative to Surgical Goblin now dipping into the triple digits. McHugh is one of the most consistent Expo players in the world. He is just a monster Siege player. He uses his exceptional mechanical placement and timing what? to take the most advantage of it. We have a defensive Expo. We saw this earlier, so this is definitely a strategy that is not hey. an accident here. What was that fireball? Didn't hit the tower. Uh, it did hit the right oh, side okay, tower and the, the king and the P.E.K.K.A. But yeah, still a, a little bit of an atypical play here. It looks like CMQ is willing to go for the spell oh, cycle yeah. win at this point, thinking that he can just get the uh, defensive lead over Surgical Goblin and uh, make this a, a, a long game here. Hunter in the back is getting lots of nice pop shots off against the, all of these uh, melee attackers coming in close. Royal Ghost going to give him a little bit of trouble, but the Hunter survives and will get another few shots off against the remainder of these troops. And it looks like 665 remaining on that tower. Defensive X was going to come down. McHugh's at least playing it right in the sense that he only took 100 damage on the last push, but he did 200 damage from a Fireball. So we have 665, that's what? Two Fireballs, two logs? Ooh, nice. Yeah, pulls so over a bunch of those troops with just some really cheap cycle. Ice Spirit and Skeletons giving him some good value there. Now the Mega Minion will get distracted, won't even get a chance to shoot at that Royal Ghost. Uh, Royal Ghost going invisible, of course, whenever it's not getting hit off on anything, and the Mega Minion floats on into the Ewiz. 
to meet his ultimate demise. 238, and it looks like with the lead that CMQ has right now, all that he has to do is just defend and keep these pushes off of tower. Surgical Goblin has got a lot uh, of heavy hitters, but he hasn't been able to make it to that tower yet. And as you mentioned, it's really difficult to uh, build up big pushes against spell cycling decks because if you put something behind your king tower, it's just, then they just spell it, right? So he has to build up a push somehow not putting anything too close. Oh, the minions! Man. The minions are locked onto the tower! It's down to under 300. Now this one more poison and log will do it. So, Ex so McHugh has to switch over to Expo himself. He can't just rely on fireballs. Here comes the P.E.K.K.A. It's blocked by the That's Ice it. Golem at the river. But you think a fireball is going to come through and take the game here? Oh Surge yeah, three, absolutely. Surge four, has got this, man. Miners I, we got to see that again later on. The turnabout right there was incredible. Great plays from Surgical Goblin. Able to get that right side uh, offer here. And it, it looks like they're going to be playing, yeah, that eight card setup. Uh, that was uh, amazing in the spring season last year. It's It's been dipping down a little bit in usage. Some players have even swapped in Valkyrie instead of the Knight in mm -hmm. order to uh, take advantage of the buff to Valkyrie in the, in the nerf tonight. But we're going to see a classic Goblin Blade duel here now. So here's why I think Trainer Luis made this challenge. He, besides believing he's a very good log bait player, right. uh, if you remember during the fall EU season, Adam was considered the best log bait player in the world. And in one match, Surgical Goblin played a log bait mirror against Adam and won. And that was a, considered a crazy bold play to play the best log bait player in the world and win the mirror match. So I think Trainer Luis is trying to call his shot Babe Ruth style against Surgical Goblin. Ah. I think Surgical Goblin's got the better uh, of the first minute here. Looks like he's got a couple of nice chip uh, hot, uh, shots off under the left lane, but getting that King Tower activated is a uh, real big advantage here. You know, they said classical log bait. I'm not sure if they're uh, allowed to switch out between Tornado and Inferno Tower. Those were both used uh, quite frequently in the log bait archetype. We've seen Tornado now from Surgical Goblin. Right side is going to be a uh, log rolling in to try to support this Goblin Barrel push. One of the Goblins makes it onto the tower, though, and one of the... Uh, and, and, and there's no King Tower activation. That Tornado just logs out of the hand. night away. Yeah. Logs out of hand, so you could see maybe a Goblin Barrel right now, but Surgical Goblin already has a pretty good setup because he was able to Tornado Goblins to his King Tower much earlier. So that Surgical Goblin King Tower is actually is activated right now. Oh, Logs coming in. Great placement. You put the Goblin Barrel up front, so all of this, the Goblin Gang has to run towards you. You hit the log, and it cleans out most of the Goblin Gang. Mm, beautiful read by Trainer Luis. We yeah. saw an Ice Spirit there to catch all three of those Goblins landing right in the same spot. You can see Surgical Goblin far ahead in the damage race here, but it's not a, a, a lead that Trainer Luis couldn't come back from here. We'll see uh, if this uh, elixir advantage that Trainer Luis has right now can be leveraged into a counter push. Yeah, Log Bait is a classic one tower deck. It's not going to try to 2 1 you or 3 crown you. It's just trying to take one tower. Remember, the eighth Although in card. Although in, in the mirror match, it could be slightly different. In these, uh, the eighth card is Rocket for Ooh. both decks, right? So even though, yeah, there's a 200 damage advantage, they're both just going for Rocket Cycle. Right now, Trainer Luis would win that. Or, or, I'm sorry, uh, Sir Goblin would win that exchange because he was a little bit ahead, but Trainer Luis is going to try to catch up by using a few Princess and Goblin Gang tricks. So Trainer Luis soaking a Goblin Gang out the right side is a very aggressive, ballsy move. He's saying, basically, I'm confident that this is going to be a 1-0 game, and I know that I can outcycle you to get that victory. Right now, though, he's down by about 400 hit points. Surgical Goblin on defense with a Princess in back. He's going to start getting some chip damage against the Knife. Protecting his own Princess with a Knight play of his own, though, at that right side bridge. Looks like Surgical Goblin is now going to have to contend with a Goblin Barrel going out back. Catches it with the Goblin Gang perfectly, and he'll go on the counterattack with another Rocket flying in. I think that's three times now Luis has put the Goblin Barrel in the exact same spot, and that's, I think, your Surgical Goblin is good at picking up those patterns and taking advantage of them. Here we are. One Rocket's going to come in, I think, for Surgical Goblin and try to finish this game off. Yep, Rocket and Log will do it. Surgical Goblin has got the win here, just needs to get to that elixir and hold off against one ah! final rocket assault. Backside's down to 916. Good rocket hit there, but Surge with the win throws those final two spells and will defeat Trainer Luis 1-0 in this game. You know, okay, both players are ready, wiping the sweat off their palms, ready to get these hits off. Oh, crap. With the hat on, he looks like he's in the darkness there. Surgical Goblin uh, a, a little bit more out in the uh, the brightness. So since we're in Texas, I think we can give him some uh, Old West analogs. Aw, crap, with the black hat. I think it's got to make him the outlaw in this matchup. You know, uh, I know, Woody, you're from Texas originally, but we also have in the crowd one of the most famous Clash Royale Texans, God Slayer from the ah. spring season. He's got his big old 10-gallon hat sitting out in the crowd. Uh, he, he's local boy, so he was able to come on down here and yeah. uh, see the show. So he's hanging out. We'll probably see him tomorrow in the $20,000 Open. Ooh, good chance of that. The qualifiers are happening right now, so make sure to come on <laughs> down 
the South by Southwest if you want to get a chance to compete in them. Great strike from that Sparky out the right lane. Tornado will allow Surge to pull that giant onto the King Tower and get a nice defensive edge here. But what can he do against the Skarmy? Nice two for three trade with the ice kill in that pack. Surgical Goblin is one of the most aggressive tornado players. What's in the crap game? doing? He's not even looking at the screen. He dropped a Mega Minion and figured that would be enough to defend. I guess so. That's. I think you know one of the cool things about this is starting to see that the personalities of the teams <laughs> evolve. And if there's one word I would use to describe Immortal so far, it's confident. All of them. Whether or not the results bear it out are all pretty confident. C. McHugh definitely, uh, with confidence is key. It's on his Twitter account. You can see it every time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, Trainer Luis felt good about making that challenge. Like, ah, oh, I can beat you in a mirror match. Let me yeah. do that. And Ah Crap's sitting here playing stuff, looking around, pointing fingers. Confidence well and well humor. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, good, well mannered, good humored. Yeah. I think that uh, they're all clearly having having a lot of fun with the event today. Oh, oh no! Wow. wow, the guard shields all came off, and the splash was big enough to also hit that executioner. But I was saying, Surgical Goblin, one of the most aggressive tornado players in the game, he was one of the first players I saw to start tornadoing three musketeers all into the same lane. He's definitely willing to, to tornado, uh, obviously, goblin towers and things like, or goblin barrels to your tower. But he even does it to, like, unsupported giants and golems. Like, if you just let the tank get to the tower, it's like, nah, I'll just tornado to my king tower. I don't know if, this, if you notice this or not. Ocrap just got hoisted by his own petard out that right side. Tried to send uh, the Sparky in to back up the uh, giant on the left lane, but the pushback from Sparky Firing onto the defending troops uh, resulted in that target going down the right lane. This is a big hit. All right, now we're going for Surgical Goblin. Right side's getting chopped apart at Executioner. Uncontested. Mega Minion finally swipes him down, but that right side has been finished off. And uh, oh crap, has only got 24 seconds left to get this thing into overtime. I'm telling you, if you want to learn how to play Tornado at the top level, you got to watch Surgical Goblin's games. This dude pulls Tornado moves that I feel like no other player is able to do. So that's. One of the things that makes him stand out, Ah oh, Crap throws the minion horde down. I don't know if that was a joke or not, because he puts Skeleton Army right after. Um, but he is going to take this game. And you know what that means? Surgical Goblin is going to claim our $100 bounty for 3-0 sweeping the Immortals team. Well played to Surgical Goblin.